Minister, can we start by clearing up a couple of uncertainties? Um, if I said uh, that non-Christians are bound for hell, I'm not going to ask you to adjudicate on that, but I'd like you to tell me who would decide in the first instance whether that could be hate speech or not? OK, if I, if I just may just give you a little bit of history here. Stirring up hatred um, has been uh, against race for over 40 years in Scotland, England and Wales. So just for your spe specific question there, uh, what this, this hate crime in Scotland that was enacted yesterday does mean is that it would be an offence to incite hatred, to be abusive and threatening, stirring up hatred towards an individual, which would cause them fear and alarm. If you were just saying that in your house or on your social media, I'm not going to be, be saying what the police Scotland would say, but that's your expression, your freedom of expression, which is respected within this bill. Yeah, but uh, if I can be a little specific, let's say that um, I said that uh, non-Christians like that Hamza Yusuf are bound for hell, uh, and somebody else, as I understand it, any individual, might be able to report me to Police Scotland uh, for a hate crime. Is that true or is it not true? It would be up if you were causing fear for an individual through your comments. I think we have to be clear here, Trevor, that England and Wales have had stirring up hatred against no, religion I, I, and race for the last 15 years. For, so what forgive me, I'm, I'm just asking a, a thing about the mechanics of this. I'm not even asking whether such a comment is wrong or not. I'm just asking, would someone be entitled under the new law to report me to the police? It would be up to if an individual was personally threatened and in fear of your com comments and they felt that they wanted to report it, then it would be up to the individual, then it would be up to the police, police to decide whether or not there was any criminality involved in those comments. Uh, and it wouldn't, happen, it wouldn't have to be the person I'd named uh, and presumably uh, nobody would have to take into account whether I was making, trying to make be funny or whether I really meant it. It's just the words that count. What I'm trying to get here clear here is what is the law actually permitting? Okay, what the law is doing is we're protecting people from the core, uh, from the hatred and prejudice within our communities. So this, as I said previously, this has already been law for over 40 years for race and in England and Wales for religion and sexual orientation well, 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 for the last 15 well, years. So what well, we're with, doing with in respect, Scotland... With, with respect, uh, uh, as a former chair of the Commission for Racial Equality and the uh, Equality and Human Rights Commission and one of the authors of the 2010 Act, this isn't exactly the same law because uh, the historic law, the law that we have in England and Wales relating to race, doesn't incorporate uh, specifically the uh, provision that anybody, whether they are involved or not, can report you to the police. And that's what I'm really trying to get at here. Is that the case or not? If anybody felt threatened, they could report it to Police Scotland. There is a very, very high threshold of uh, criminality uh, because freedom of expression is embedded into the legislation that has been brought into place in Scotland. OK, let me ask you another, just another, I suppose, technical but straightforward question. If I say something that is heard in, in London, but, that it's, but I know that it's going to be heard in Scotland, am I liable... Uh, to be covered by this legislation as well. Could Police Scotland investigate me in that, those circumstances? Or do I have my to be in Scotland or Scottish? My understanding this legislation does, it is for people in Scotland and for, for crimes that happen in Scotland. Oh, so the act of, what, of hate speech has to be committed in Scotland? That, that's my understanding. That's what we've, we've incorporated into the Scottish Act, yes. Oh, so, for example, J.K. Rowling, who says in her tweet... Arrest me if you dare, if you dare, but I'm abroad. That so that actually doesn't count because she says this abroad. I'm not going to comment on individuals' behaviour or or, or okay. comments. All I'll say is what is in this hate crime act is a protection for people from minority groups with protected characteristics from abuse and from threatening behaviour that would cause them fear or alarm. The the, the reason that that I'm asking all of these questions, I guess, is that. I think there's still a little bit of confusion about how this will actually work. 
who would actually uh, operate it. But there's also a separate question, which is one of priorities. Um, last year, there were about f there were 5,738 hate crimes reported in Scotland. Uh, let's assume that everybody who got reported was prosecuted in some way. Let's say that you get 6,000 next year under this legislation. What guidance are you giving to the police? I'm not saying it's operational, but presumably they have to have some guidance about what is more important than what else. Are you giving them guidance about whether uh, hate speech against age is more important than one against religion, or is it the degree of ven venom? No. What, what is the no, story no. here? No, they're all protected characteristics um, under this Act, and that we have been working very, uh, very closely with Police Scotland throughout bringing in this legislation, and myself with them the last year um, before it has been introduced on on um, yesterday. But one of the things is they have been given a very, very clear steer um, throughout this legislation when it was went through Parliament in 2021 about the the protection of freedom of expression. The issue of priorities here seems to me quite an important one. And I just want to put this to you. Most of the conversation, whether you wanted this to be the case or not, has been about uh, speech about sexual identity, trans uh, women, trans men, and so on. Uh, I looked at the data for Scotland last year, that is the financial year ending 2023. 20, in that year, there were 55 cases of hate crimes, which had a trans element. That was down from 86 the previous year. Meanwhile, there were 61,934 cases of domestic abuse. The Scottish government has said that its hope for legislation on misogyny has to wait while this uh, piece of legislation goes through. 55 versus 61,934. 61,934 have to wait while the 55 gets dealt with. Is that the right order of priorities here? Yeah, if I could just give you a little bit of history, because this was considered going back in 2021 when the when the legislation was going through the Scottish Parliament. But the Scottish uh, women's groups at the time did not want to include it. They wanted a further separate bill on... Um, from coming from the Scottish Parliament, what we did do is that we 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 had uh, Helena Bar Baroness um, Helena uh, have an independent review, which we took the recommendations forward. And last year we consulted on that to bring through a specific misogyny bill, which will be introduced later this year into well, the Scottish. Well, you could have introduced that any time you liked. But we Why, were. But we were when there were sixty-two thousand, as opposed to just over fifty crimes, did you choose? the one that affected 50 rather than the one that chose, affected 62,000. No, not at all. And I and I appreciate that there is very polarised views regarding transgender identity, but this we have to remember that this Hate Crime Act does incorporate against age, disability and the race, religion. So it's not all about transgender. Yeah, Women and the, and the, specifically and the, and will total, have misogyny. If, if I just may finish, Trevor, if I can. We, we, the total we are of those is about 2,500, as opposed to 62,000 domestic abuse. Yes, and that's why we, we really need to have a separate bill, because I also have violence against women and girls, and so we have a separate bill for misogyny moving forward, as we have been listening to our women's group and stakeholders that did not want it included in this, this act.